the implications if we're right and the NASA censors are wrong. And the politics are that slowly, painfully, painstakingly, NASA's going to start with this mission removing the covers from the eyes of the public around the world and beginning to reveal the Mars that John and I and others have worked to, to support and document for the last 30 some years. I mean, I've been on this road for 30 some years trying to prove that there has been an exquisite period of inhabited life on the planet Mars. And NASA has been doing everything it can not to tell people the truth. And it may be, given the hints we're seeing, and the more hints we're going to talk about later tonight, that this could be the mission where that finally John, if your objective is to land, yes, to and explore an incredible, vast, ancient arcology, which is what I think Mount Sharp really is sitting there in Gale Crater, a yes. collapsed arcology, yes, because one of the things this rover is equipped with, which no other rover, no other spacecraft has ever been equipped with, George, it's got headlights. <laughs> now, hang on a second. Why? Since you're not driving at night, and you're sitting and doing science, and you're only driving during the day, and you take your pictures and send them home, why do you need headlights at night? You think we're going to go into some caves? They're going into the structure where they don't have any light, no sunlight, but you want light so you can take pictures. And of course, you couldn't use solar panels if you're going inside an arcology. You need nuclear power, which doesn't care whether you're in a building or outside. Look, there's a hidden agenda, and as we go through the morning, I'm going to lay out more data points, carefully researched, so I don't sound like a total idiot, because people can go and confirm this themselves. Now, whether they interpret the data the same way, that's up to them. But the data is there that this is the mission that's going to break the doors down and start, I'm going to use the D word, if they decide to is this going to be the catapult, John, to get us really rolling into Mars, this mission? It could be. Uh, it, it has that potential. Um, I, the politics will tell us, John, whether this is going to be the beginning of what we have been absolutely demanding for 30 years, which is openness, disclosure of what's there, or business as usual where NASA hides all the good stuff and the American people who paid for it never get to see it. Well, Dick, I, I agree with you. It's a, it's a, I'll mention, I, I, I got a great quote for you guys uh, from uh, Shelley Thompson. She says that uh, we're taking too long to find extraterrestrial life, seeing as it's already found us. Yeah, it sure has. <laughs> are you, are you, you a believer in visitation here, John? Or you, you want... I am, yes. You are. <laughs> it's well, a universe out there, and we're just one little speck of dust. When a Ph.D. plasma physicist can believe we're being visited from extraterrestrials, that's a pretty big story. Yeah, well... well John's not just your ordinary plasma physicist. John's been in on the ground floor. That's what right. I think is, you know, we wind up being the most important investigation of life on Mars. And all we have to do, George, is be a little more patient, because this could be the year. <laughs> Let's go to... Side, this mission could discover life on Mars. It has the equipment to do it. They're not advertising that as its purpose, but it has the equipment to do it. It has a methane sniffer on it, and it has the ability to distinguish between methane that is caused by uh, biological exhalations or those that are created by a geologic phenomenon. And so if it sniffs out biologic methane, it has found a scent of life on Mars. That's, that is exciting. Now, Robert Richard C. Hoagland with us. He's with me all night tonight. Richard, come on in. Morning and congratulations. Well, excellent. To, to everybody, I think. I, I, Americans yeah. should be happy tonight. This should be yeah, a really should. amazing uproar. Robert, let me ask you a question. This thing is a metric ton. It required an enormous technological leap forward beyond the spirit and opportunity, which were, you know, a couple hundred pounds, to actually pull this thing off. How close are we with this technology in terms of conventionally landing a human mission, scaling this approach up uh, on Mars in the next, let's say, decade? Uh, this approach is scalable. Uh... And uh, instead of coming in hard and crashing with airbags to soften the blow, which is what Spirit and Opportunity did, they put this thing down like a crate of eggs. Um, <laughs>